If you've been trying to buy a house over the past few years, you've probably felt like this. And this. And also this. Seriously, home buying conditions have been the worst they've ever been. And for many people, the conditions are actually getting worse. So as someone trying to buy their own home, should you buy now or wait until 2024 for better buying conditions? I'm Biko Konstantinos and that's what we're going to talk about today. Hey, if you own a home or would like to own a home, why don't you give this video a like and consider subscribing to my channel. I'll provide you with independent analysis and commentary regarding the real estate market, the stock market, and all the big stuff that could affect your lives. So when's the best time to buy a house? Now, some of you might've heard my intro and thought, it's not about this year or next, I can't even afford a house. And I totally get it. More and more people are in the situation when they can't even afford their own home. And this is actually tragic, especially when they're doing everything they can, working hard, trying to save a deposit, but still have no chance of acquiring their own home. So how have we gotten to this position? Well, for many years now, house prices have outgrown wages. This makes it a lot harder for people buying a house now compared to say 30 or 40 years ago. As an example, 30 years ago, a house might have been three times the average wage. So if the average wage was 20,000, you would have been able to buy an average type home for around 60,000. But houses are so much more expensive today. Now in countries like Canada, Australia and New Zealand, the average home is closer to 10 times the average yearly wage. And that is why houses are so expensive and why buying conditions are completely different to when our parents and grandparents bought a home. In most cases, it is now much harder to buy a home with a two income couple than it was 30 or 40 years ago with only a one income couple. Now let that sink in for a moment. In previous generations, only one member of the couple had to work and still found found it easier to buy a home and pay off a home. Is that a kick in the guts or what? So less work stress with two people not having to both work, but also less financial stress. Because you had your own home, you couldn't get kicked out or have your rent skyrocket like the current situation for many people. And you basically just had to keep a job to pay off the entire home fairly quickly. And after that, invest in more property or the stock market, which both saw unbelievable multi-decade growth. But all those good times for so many years years could come at a price. And that price is coming due now as people struggle to buy a home. So house prices were already super expensive when COVID hit. And then we saw every government and central bank do the same thing, which is to pump billions and trillions into their economy and drop interest rates all the way to zero, which put a rocket under house prices and made them even more expensive. And it also created the most speculative, crazy housing market we've ever witnessed. So if you were trying to buy a home during the COVID boom period, you would have been trying to buy in the most fear of missing out type conditions we've ever seen where houses were getting multiple bids selling straight away having offers way above their list price and all that frenzied craziness so then what happened we saw a global inflation crisis so every country has been raising interest rates aggressively to curb these record inflation levels so first home buyers had to contend with ultra expensive house prices but now on top of that they have the added difficulty of surging in interest rates. And as interest rates have surged, borrowing capacity has significantly declined. In many places, the amount that the banks will lend you to buy a house has reduced by about 30%. So when interest rates were at zero, the banks might have lent you 500,000, but now those same banks may only lend you 350,000. And that's a massive reduction. And guess what? House prices at this stage haven't come down 30%. So it's even managed to get harder to buy a home. And you wouldn't believe it. People trying to buy a home are now getting hit by something else. A rental crisis. Around the globe we're seeing a shortage of rental properties which is driving the prices up to ridiculous levels. So it's not enough that you can't afford your own home. You now have all the insecurities coming with the rental crisis. And by having to pay much higher rent means it's way more difficult to save for a home deposit. Especially when costs of living are surging as well. And you also have to realize that renters didn't get any benefit from the post-COVID 
housing boom that governments and central banks created, they're not able to access generous taxation deductions like property owners can. So they're forced to pay taxes on any sort of savings or investments when they're trying to buy their own home. No matter what your situation, you have to feel for renters over the past few years. Okay, so I've painted a very dismal picture for the current situation that home buyers are facing. For all the years I've been alive, I've never seen it this bad. And it's not just statistics. Many lives are being really affected. And I feel for you if you are affected. But what about the question as to when to buy? Well, any time can be a good time to buy your own home if you can afford it. I'm not going to make a recommendation as to whether you should buy now or wait, but I am going to put forward some ideas as to why buying conditions could significantly improve over the months ahead. Firstly, we've had so many interest rate rises so quickly that I don't think the market has had time to absorb them. There's normally a lagging effect from when interest rates rise to when the entire housing market feels that interest rate rise. And in places like the US, the impact could be even further delayed because many people are on 30 year fixed interest rate loans. So sharp interest rates have brought house prices down somewhat, but as their effect keeps impacting the market, prices will continue to come down over the months ahead, in my opinion. Another big factor to consider is a global recession. So far, consumer spending has remained quite strong across the globe, so people are still generally positive, but there's signs that that could all change very quickly. Check out the average savings rate across the US. The average amount of savings that people have is deteriorating rapidly. Now even more scary is the rate of credit card debt in the US. As credit card debt rises, many people could find themselves in a spiral where they have to pay never-ending ridiculous credit card interest rates. So this is a very worrying sign for the global economy. So people have less money, more debt, at the same time that the cost of living is skyrocketing. This will inevitably result in people spending less because they have less. And when consumers spend less on goods and services, companies' profits reduce. And as their profits reduce, they try to cut costs. And this leads to increased layoffs. And when you start to see increased layoffs, unemployment levels rise. And as unemployment levels rise, more and more people will struggle to pay their mortgages. And this can lead to forced selling, which puts more downward pressure on house prices. Because like we saw too many buyers competing for too few houses during the boom, the opposite can happen in a recession, where you have too many sellers trying to sell to a reduced buying pool. It's something that doesn't happen often, but there's some very large economic clouds on the horizon, which will most likely lead to a recession recession and that recession could turn out to be longer and deeper than many people expect. So the global economic landscape is pointing to further downward pressure on house prices in my opinion. Now another big theme that I've touched on is the current rental crisis. Because houses are so expensive right now, more and more people end up renting. So the current rental crisis is affecting a very large section of the community. For this reason, the government won't be able to ignore this current crisis, otherwise many people could be forced into homelessness. Those low income renters who are the most vulnerable could and are finding themselves in desperate situations. On top of this, young people are starting to realise how unfair it is for current home buyers compared to those in previous generations. And I'm seeing it all over social media and there seems to be more of a backlash against the housing policies that served previous generations so well, but now all they've done is created a speculative housing market where housing has become more of an avenue to create wealth rather than an affordable way to keep a roof over your head. Because most housing policies over many developed nations have benefited property owners but mostly ignored renters or non-homeowners. The result of this is that property owners have been able to create more and more wealth while non-property owners are falling further and further behind in the wealth gap. So because of the backlash against these policies that have created this wealth gap, I feel that governments will start overhauling many of these housing policies so that they work for their entire country and not just property owners. And we're already seeing some countries take action in this area, like Canada banning foreign investment and taxing empty houses, like New Zealand scrapping negative gearing and things like that. So far, Australia hasn't taken any action to really address housing affordability, but this has to change in my opinion because Australian house prices are among the worst in the entire world. And if the government doesn't take action, the people could start voting in a government that will take action. So because of this global housing affordability crisis, governments are trying to address it with housing policies. And as more and more of these policies get implemented, some of that speculative demand should reduce from the housing market. And as a result, house prices
prices should start to come down even further. Because if you take away some of the rewards for owning property or multiple properties, it creates overall less demand. And less demand means either lower prices or prices that don't rise as ridiculously fast as they have over the past few decades. So I've given you some broad themes for the housing market, but there's also a number of other factors that could affect the entire economy, which in turn could affect house prices. We've got massive national debts, with the US having a national debt of $31.5 trillion. And just the interest payments alone on that debt is hard to fathom. We've got high inflation that could remain high for several years. We've got multiple geopolitical risks, with the current war between Russia and Ukraine, but also other risks that could eventuate. And lastly, most developed countries are seeing real population decline, which means the birth rate isn't matching the death rate, and populations are only growing because of immigration. So with the birth rate falling off a cliff, in the years ahead, many countries could see population decline, which will mean less properties required for the entire population. And that's another thing that could reduce demand for property. Just look at what's happened in Japan, because their birth rates are ultra low, and they don't have any immigration. Now this won't affect most countries immediately, but could start to affect over the decades ahead. So overall, I feel like there's more chance that house prices continue to decline over 2023, which should mean that there'd be better buying opportunities in 2024. But that's not a guarantee. Like we've seen over the last few years, anything can happen. So if you are looking to buy a house, I feel for you because of all the difficulties being thrown at you, but I wish you all the very best and hope you realize your goal. I'm Biko Constantinos. <laughs>